Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we have an exciting topic to dive into what are microservices. You may have heard this buzzword floating around in the world of software development, but what exactly are microservices? Well, in this video, we'll not only uncover the answer, but also explore the advantages, challenges, and even some real life examples of companies using microservices. So let's get started. But before that, for more such interesting videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. So let's get started with the video. But before we jump into microservices, let's start with the traditional way of building applications known as monolithic architecture. Now, in the world of software development, monolithic architecture refers to a structure where all the components of an application are tightly integrated into a single monolithic unit. It's like having a massive building where everything from the foundation to the roof is interconnected. Now, while monolithic architecture has its advantages, it also comes with some challenges. Imagine updating a single feature of your application. With monolithic architecture, you have to recompile and redeploy the entire application which can be time consuming and risky. This can slow down the development process and make it harder to scale and maintain the application. And that's when enters microservices. Instead of a monolithic building, think of a microservice as a collection of small independent buildings that work together to create a powerful application. But what exactly are microservices? Well, microservices are an architectural style that structures an application as a collection of loosely coupled services, each serving a specific business capability. These services communicate with each other through APIs, allowing them to work together harmoniously. In a microservice architecture, each service focuses on doing one thing and doing it well. For example, you can have a user service, an inventory service, and a payment service. Each service can be redeveloped, redeployed, and scaled independently, enabling faster development cycles and easier maintenance. But how do these microservices interact with each other? Well, they communicate through well-defined APIs using lightweight protocols like HTTP or messaging systems like RabbitMQ. This decoupled communication allows each service to evolve independently without impacting the entire system. Microservices interact with each other using various communication protocols and mechanisms. And here are some common ways microservices interact. First one is REST APIs. Now, microservices often expose REST APIs that allow communication over HTTP. Each microservice typically has its own set of endpoints representing different resources and operations. Services can make HTTP requests to the appropriate endpoints to exchange data and invoke functionalities of other microservices. Second is messaging queues. Now, microservices can communicate asynchronously through messaging queues. One microservice can publish messages to a queue and other microservices can consume those messages. This decouples the service, allowing them to operate independently. Popular messaging systems include RabbitMQ, Apache Kafka, and ActiveMQ. Third is service discovery. Now, in a microservice environment where services can be dynamically scaled and deployed across multiple instances, service discovery becomes crucial. Service discovery enables microservices to locate and communicate with each other without hard coding IP address or endpoints. It provides a centralized mechanism for registering, discovering, and resolving the network location of services. Then comes orchestration. Microservices orchestration involves managing the interaction and coordination between multiple microservices to accomplish in a specific business process or workflow. Orchestration typically involves a central component called an orchestrator that controls the execution and sequencing of microservices. Well, it's worth noting that the choice of interaction mechanism depends on the specific requirement and constraints of the system. Some system may rely on a combination of these approaches to meet their communication needs. Now let's talk about key characteristics of microservices. So the first one is microservices are highly decoupled. Each service can be developed, deployed and maintained independently, providing flexibility and agility in the development process. Second is microservices are scalable. You can scale individual services based on their specific needs, allowing you to optimize 
resource allocation and handle increased user demand more effectively. Third, microservices are fault tolerant. If one service fails, it doesn't bring down the entire application. The fault is isolated and other services can continue to function. And lastly, microservices promote technology diversity. Each service can be built using different programming languages, frameworks, and databases depending on what works best for that specific service. Now, you might be wondering who is using microservices? Well, many big names companies have adopted this architectural style. Companies like Netflix, Amazon, and Spotify have leveraged microservices to build scalable, resilient, and innovative applications. And there you have it, a glimpse into the world of microservices. From their characteristics to their benefits and real-world examples, microservices have revolutionized the way we build and scale applications. Here's a success story of one of our learners to boost your confidence. Do watch this video. Hey, I am Salahdin Quadra, and I am currently living in Algeria. I wanted to experience what it's like to live in. I also realized that to get a new job, I needed to have a professional certification in cloud computing. So last year, I started the postgraduate program in cloud computing in association with Caltech Com Saint Lydia. That with this course, I had the choice to study while I continued, and that is how I got this new job offer with 60% salary hike. In Finland, I will be leading the cloud computing unit of my new company. We cannot wait to start our new life in Finland. We are all. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting content. Until next time, happy coding. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.